Hello, this is John Chernus again, and I want to introduce you to some other third-party tools that you can use that go beyond what I've already shown you with Ping and Traceroute for troubleshooting network connectivity. Uh, a very popular program out there is called Visual Route, so I'm going to already have my uh, browser loaded. I'm going to go ahead and download that. www.visualroute.com is the site address. And let's go ahead and download Visual Route. It's free to try. You can try it. There are various, very, several uh, various versions of this program. Um, I've already looked at the free version and I found it was a very um, didn't really do much. It's um, free, which is nice, but it doesn't do a whole lot. So I think what we want to do is go to um, let's try this uh, personal advance business and support pro editions. I believe we can uh, use that for about 15 days, if I'm not mistaken. So that one will give us a lot more features than. Um, the free ones. You'll find that with all of these, if you download the trial version that lasts for about 15, 30 days, you're going to get a lot more information than you do by getting the free ones because they want you to buy the real one. So this is a, a very popular uh, suite of tools uh, that network professionals use for troubleshooting connectivity. I'm going to go up in here and let's go ahead and download this first one, the Visual Route Personal Advanced. Uh, hit the download link. It's letting me download it. Hit save and then we will go ahead and install that and see what we can do with that program alright it's downloading it almost done okay let's go ahead and open that up this is in Firefox this is how you can do it just open containing folder and there it is this was the light version I tried out just recently. I didn't find it very useful, so we're not going to use that. This is the real version that will, I believe, let us use it for maybe 15 days or so. Uh, then it will expire and you'll have to buy it. So if you're working in a company, that would be the one you would buy anyway. Okay, license agreement, I accept. All right, the path looks good. Install. I'm going to go ahead and close some of these windows now to make my computer run a little faster alright this should be done in just a second here just doing some install there would you like to run visual route now let's say yes alright it's been installed great and let's do a few uh, quick tests here you can play around with this on your own I'm just gonna show you just a few key features but there's a lot of things you can do in this program. You can just kind of play around with it and see what you can figure out. Okay. Go ahead and hit close here on the splash screen. And now it's asking me to type in an address. Uh, they put in their own there. Okay, yeah, this is a trial for 15 days. So it's fully functional, as I recall, for 15 days. So what I'd like you to do is put in some various website addresses to play around and see what you can figure out. What you'll notice is the farther you go away from where you are, the more latency or delay there is on the network. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm uh, really just about 40 miles from the heart of Silicon Valley where Google, YouTube, uh, all these various uh, high-tech companies reside, Apple Computer and so on. Um, so when I go to those sites, for example, you're going to see the latency or delay is very short. Uh, let's go to, uh, for example, Apple, apple.com, and go ahead and um, do trace. This, by the way, are the port numbers to do tests on. 80 is HTTP, 21 is, D, um, is FTP, uh, 25 is uh, mail, SMTP, for example. So I'm going to stick with port 80 here for the test, like going to their website, hitting trace. and let's wait and see what we get for the result and you can see it's actually uh, going through several paths here it looks like it's going back east for some reason I'm not quite sure why that's kind of interesting sometimes you get some very interesting results here here's me by the way shows I'm in San Francisco California this is kind of interesting and this is actually the router in my uh, in my upstairs and it's really the same network as my host but as you move along here, you'll see uh, this information may not be in here just yet. Here's Comcast information. This is the DNS server for Comcast. This is Comcast. And as you move along, you can see we're still along the Comcast network. This is still Comcast. 
This is the backbone for Comcast, ibone.comcast.net. And you can just keep moving along and you can see this is giving you quite a bit of information. It's also showing you, if you notice, uh, it's going kind of fast there, RTT, the return trip time. It's showing you the speed or latency to get to that router. Each of these is basically a router from my computer. So if I go back here, you'll see the round trip time is 42, 56, and 32. Um, the first number, by the way, is the average, the second number is the maximum, and the third number is the minimum. So you see that. So you can get some statistics by just moving your mouse over these router interfaces. Okay, so that wasn't quite what I expected. Sometimes you get weird results. It, you're seeing here, um, I was expecting to be a very local connection, and it just may be that's the path that had to be taken for this time. I'm going to do this one more time just to see what happens. Maybe we'll get a different result this time. No, nope, it's still going back east for some reason. Let's try something else. Let's go to um, www.google.com and see what happens there. And again, it looks like we're going all over the place, which is again kind of interesting. It again shows my house here and then my router in my house. And then this is again the same path that's the uh, Comcast network. You'll see that that information is all going to be basically the same until you get outside of the Comcast uh, network and onto the Internet backbone. Here it shows Google here in Mountain View. There's Mountain View. So for some reason it's going back east and coming back. I'm not sure what's going on. This can be sometimes due to a temporary issue on the Internet where it has to forward the, the, the packets back east and back. So you can see that sometimes it's not always what you think it is. So it's kind of an inter interesting response there. Um, let's try another one. Let's try um, let's try uh, Stanford, another uh, place very close to home, about 40 miles away from where I am, 40 miles south, southwest. And let's trace that one. You can use your own for tracing. Yeah, there must be something going on. It just keeps sending those packets. You can see they're going uh, apparently back east and then coming back in the number three there. That must be the DNS server for Comcast. I'm just guessing it's back east, and that's why that's happening. It says three Mount Laurel, so that's why that's probably very consistent. The, the DNS server is back east for Comcast, I'm guessing. So that looks like the only host out of the, the bunch that is back east. Everything else in here, if I blow it up, I think I just lost it, is uh, on the west coast. So that's kind of interesting. So it looks like this guy uh, is back east, and that's why we're getting that, those weird numbers. Um, let's try one more. Let's go. Um, let's go overseas. www.msu.ru. That's actually in Russia, Moscow State University. And let's see what happens. That's the website for Moscow State, and that's why you're seeing we're actually going off the uh, continent and going over to Moscow. And you can see the return trip time is getting much larger. This is one I actually did in the ping and trace route demo and you're seeing some pretty consistent results here. The nice thing about this program is it's actually giving you a map and in many cases it's showing you uh, the actual location. So there I am again, San Francisco Bay Area for my computer there, right there, and so on. And as you move along, you're gonna see those locations change. Uh, again, we're kind of moving along here. Now we're in Kansas City, Missouri. Do you see that on that host? On that router, I should say, Chicago. Washington DC so you can actually physically follow now we're in the Netherlands and we're moving along and you can see you know eventually we should end up in Russia now we see I'm kinda of taking some shortcuts here but here's the actual host in Moscow State University look at the return trip time it shows a uh, the minimum the maximum and the average there and you can see it's a, a generally around 220 to 230 milliseconds the average was 228 as you can see there so pretty interesting stuff. So my advice would be to download this version and you're going to see a lot more information. You can already see that it's quite uh, quite informative. It gives you a lot more information. Here it shows the DNS lookup to get the uh, IP for that Moscow state. It took 63 milliseconds. Uh, so this is a pretty useful tool. The other nice thing about this is compared to ping is because ping in many cases um, is blocking the um, request. Uh, I can illustrate this right now. Let me do this. Let me go to the San Diego State University website by using ping. Ping www.sdsu.edu. 
watch what happens. It looks like the side is down. And uh, you may think if you weren't really uh, knowledgeable or, or had a lot of experience in this area, you may think, oh, there's something wrong with the web server for San Diego State. It's not responding to ping. Well, the reason this is done, and we do this at the campus I work at also, is to prevent uh, automatic uh, tools that do what are known as robo pings uh, to various hosts to try to find them on the network so they can be hacked into. So it looks like San Diego State, probably at their firewall, has the... Uh, ping or ICMP protocol block so you can't get through there and that's a limitation of ping a lot of routers have either the lowest priority set to ICMP which is the ping protocol and trace route trace route so you don't get valid data so these other more sophisticated programs like visual route use different uh, types of protocols besides ping which is ICMP or trace route which is ICMP those protocols are usually given the lowest priority on the router and that's why sometimes the data is a little skewed uh, a more um, commercial program like visual route can use all these different types of uh, protocols for testing more real world protocols that are used for live traffic on the network port 80 is probably the most common and that will give us really much more reliable statistics than ping or trace route um, so let's try this www.sdsu.edu we saw ping didn't actually uh, uh, locate it it looked like it was down but it's really not let's hit trace and let's see what happens here we go again it's going over to three for the DNS lookup for um, that that's the reason that's jumping over there everything else is happening uh, on the San Francisco, uh, California side here, down to Southern California. And you can see here I am again. There I am in San Francisco, and I'm just going to kind of move along the network here. I'm going along the Comcast network here. So as I'm moving along these, I can see the return trip time in milliseconds, and the other thing you should focus on is the packet loss percent. If you see a packet loss percent, here we have 14%, okay, it's a bit of a, an issue. If you see that it's consistently uh, a very high number, here it's 0%, and so on, 25%. The, typically, is the farther you get away from your location, you do sometimes get a, a higher result. So uh, these numbers don't look too out of the ordinary, but you can see you get a lot of statistics here. You get the loss, you get the return trip time in milliseconds, return trip time is how long it takes to send a packet to that router and back to you. This is Scenic, which is the uh, backbone for the CSU system um, where traffic for uh, the campus like San Diego State or other CSUs reside. And then finally I'm at my last one. It says no responses for this node. Again, I think that has something to do with uh, ICMP being blocked, but um, it does give you uh, a rough idea of how long it's going to take if there's any problem on the network. It doesn't look like we have too many problems here. What you should do when the last one doesn't respond, you don't get any statistics, is it actually says 100% loss there, but that's not really true. You go to the one before it and that gives you a good indication. 14%, 38 milliseconds, that's for about 500 miles, that's, uh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. So there you have it. This is a, a very useful tool and I would suggest you uh, download this version, the business edition, uh, it'll work for 15 days and it'll allow you to uh, help with those troubleshooting scenarios you're going to do in this project. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson right now.